Thank you very much, Council President. Um, I, I've been on council, I think, 10 years. I think so. Um, and every year, um, it's been a mystery to me how we arrive at our assessments. Um, sometimes it's not that big of a deal, and other times it's a huge deal. I remember when our city went to like 10% increase of assessments that was pretty shocking some homes went up 200 percent it was hard to explain because we looked block by block at um identical houses on the same block the identical land and and the assessments were so very different in unexplained ways Bigger homes were uh, lower assessments, smaller homes, larger assessments, um, homes that were assessed <laughs> way beyond what they appeared they were worth. Other homes um, that were purchased at very high um, uh, sale prices were assessed lower than the sale price on the same block. Uh, I actually published a picture of two homes next to each other, both assessed at like a hundred thousand dollars and then the following year one assessment went down and the other assessment went up to like three hundred thousand uh, dollars nobody's going to pay for these homes for three hundred thousand dollars no way they're, they're not in a location a geographic location that where that would make sense they're right next to each other they're they're rather run down uh, there's no amenities like a great school district, uh, you know, there's high crime, all that type of stuff. It, it does not make sense. I believe as people receive their assessments and for a whole bunch of other people, when they get their tax bill, they're going to start looking at the other houses on their block and find incredible differences, unbelievable differences. Um, you know, we did an audit, council did, and the audit came back that the methodology was below industry standard. OPA says they did an RFP, got someone to do an, an, an audit, and now they're above industry standard. I, I find that to be very difficult to accept. I think the, the it would be a third party in a system of checks and balances like city council that would authorize an audit, and if the audit came back, back it was above industry standard, okay. Th that's something that I could accept. Um, at this point in time, I have no confidence in this process. I find it to be a continuing problem, um, and I will say that I am drafting a letter to the city controller. I am asking her to examine this process to look at how OPA arrived at its, at its values. The methodology is one thing, but what's the actual process? What is the evidence? I want to see the math. I want to see the paperwork that, that shows what this is. It is astounding that when we look at the, the rates of increase, it is the poorest neighborhoods, the most crime-ridden neighborhoods, that have some of the highest increases in values, over 50%. Now, the median household income in this city is about $40,000, but in ma many of our neighborhoods, people are not making 30 or even 25. And, and to double their taxes, it, it, it's a huge amount. And it is incumbent on, on the office of property assessment to come and show and prove that that these assessments are accurate i hear from them ass assessments which to me are based on the idea that certain people will pay a maximum rate for a home but that's not everybody um, and that cannot be used universally. If someone is going to benefit from living in that house, then they are willing to pay more than that house is worth. But that house is only worth a certain amount because it has to be universal to anybody. It's not just to some people 
who will benefit because of the job they have or the status they have. It has to be that that is the actual value of the property. I will finally say that um, I intend to introduce a bill and I, and, and I certainly encourage um, my colleagues to consider you know, the same or working together. But I think this is such a critical issue that it's not something that we could just ad adjust um, some of the loop and some other things that only help a certain number of people. I think the, the result of this uh, assessment is going to drive people out of their homes. And that's not something we want to do. But I look at my own neighborhood where, um, where, where we're in the second highest um, uh, assessment increase, not even the first highest. I mean, we're talking about North Philly. We're talking about these locations for the, for the highest. But, but within <coughs> Southwest Philly, some of the, the, the blocks are up almost 90%. 90%. And, and, and these, they don't have great schools. They have murder. They have uh, high crime. People can't come out of their homes. They don't have any amenities. They have dumping. They have all kinds of problems. I live right there. And while I can afford to pay twice my real estate taxes, they cannot. That, that is a huge percentage of their annual um, income annual income it would have to be proven to me that this is the actual value of the home that someone will actually give them three hundred thousand dollars four hundred thousand dollars for their house because i wouldn't pay for it i don't know who would what i do think is that when they go into sheriff sale Someone will purchase that home for a lot less than that, put a lot of money into it, and sell it for a million dollars. And that's not what assessments should be. Um, I don't know what is going to happen here, but I just want to let the administration know and the city know this is completely unacceptable. I don't believe it. I have no confidence in it. I tremendously doubt it. And I think for the sake of our, our residents, we're going to have to fight this thing. We're going to have to, in my opinion, just my opinion, really lower, lower the tax rate to offset the damage that this assessment is going to do to families and, and, and vulnerable people and, and, and seniors and, and, and single mothers and People trying to recover from this pandemic, we're really ha going to have to lower this tax rate to offset the tremendous harm and talk about the increase in gun violence, frustration, domestic abuse, drug addiction. Every bad thing that is going to harm this city is going to come from the resulting taxes. And if our goal is to just replace our citizens with wealthy people. This is a good way to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, before I call on Councilwoman Brooks, I just want to make one correction. I guess I was anticipating next week's election where we would, uh, after which we would have a full complement of council members. I referred to the vote count as 17-0. We are still at 16-0. Uh, shortly, we will be at 17-0 uh, after the next week's municipal election, just for the record. Chair recognizes is Councilwoman Brooks. Thank you, Council President. I want to take a brief moment to thank Council co my Council colleagues for their support on the two resolutions they passed today, recognizing the life and work of Shakita Gaines, as well as the 125th anniversary of Philadelphia Home and School Council. As someone who came out of education organizing, I know firsthand how essential home and school associations can be in force fostering parent engagement, empowering school communities, and giving families a voice in their children's education.